What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, Beast Combiner, Scourge, and Predacon Scorponok. Now this review really couldn't have come at a better time because we recently did just get confirmation that Scorponok will be appearing in the upcoming movie. And not just one, there's going to be a shed ton of them. There seems to be like a whole army of Scorponoks. So I'm not too sure how exactly that's going to be explained in the film. You know, is the Scorponok that we saw in the original 2007 movie perhaps a lone survivor of Rise the Beast because this film does take place in the 90s. I guess we'll have to wait and see but anyway let's check out the box art. So here we have Scourge and Scorponok combined. You know I'm not the biggest fan of this gimmick but I picked this up solely for the Scorponok. Here for this side we get a really badass image of Terracon Scourge and the back of the box does have some pretty promising product shots. So we get a Scourge which transforms from a robot into a truck. We get the whole combining gimmick as well as Scorponok in his scorpion mode and there another really badass image of Scourge himself. So we'll that being said, let's get these guys out here, let's combine them, let's stack them up to some of the other Beast Combiner figures. And we're going to kickstart this video off by taking a look at Darkness himself. Here we have Scourge, who we now know is working for Unicron. That is the big bad threat that the Autobots have never faced anything like. And to be honest with you guys, I am so excited to see just exactly how that plays out in the film. You know, is Scourge potentially a reformatted Seeker, much like he was in G1? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But in terms of this figure, going to be real with you guys, it's incredibly basic. Probably as basic as you can get for a Transformer. But this is one of the few Scourge figures which are out there so if you don't want to fork out like 50 quid for the studio series leader you just want something just to have in your collection then I don't think this is going to be a bad shout and it does come with a pretty sick Scorponok which we'll get into in just a second but in terms of the detail do you know what that face looks pretty bang on I do like how they painted that Terracon insignia looks super sick and surprisingly there is some decent detail packed within the chest I'm not too sure what that's supposed to be behind the grill you know is it his wheels really kind of strange but I also like how they captured that asymmetrical design so we get the humanized hand on this side and then this massive fat ass electromagnetic claw which he seems to be zapping the crap out of the Autobots and the Maximals with in the trailer so yeah that's going to be wicked and I like how they've painted the chain so yeah that doesn't look too bad in terms of the rest of the figure though you know incredibly basic as we flip him around to the back not too much kibble but that's got to do with how he transforms you know the truck mode is not good at all now in terms of his articulation literally feels like he's been ripped straight out of the 80s because he has something like five points so nothing at all in terms of the head we do get ball joints for both shoulders so I guess that's something and for this arm surprisingly a ball joint for the claw so that's not too bad the hips can kick forwards that far back to that far out to the sides a very slight bend here at the knee due to transformation and yeah that's pretty much it so kind of a brick but anyways we get stuck into his transformation like three steps again so you're going to want to take his head rotate it here all the way to the back detach the shoulders and bring these pieces here inward do the exact same for this side we'll now take the shins fold these sections outwards on both sides and then snap these two halves together pretty certain you guys all know how this is going to rock so literally rock this whole assembly here backwards we can then snap up the shins and bang here we have Scourge fully transformed into his kind of monster truck you know a very simple transformation so to tell the truth I wasn't expecting too much out of the truck mode and damn this thing is horrific looking I guess to kind of go along with the persona of the character in the movie but yeah not too accurate to the film it's unfortunate that it doesn't look as good as the upcoming Battle Changes version because I do believe that is a scale class below the Beast Combiners but anyway you know the detail for the front of the grill looks pretty cool I like the interlinking chains especially that Terracon logo smack bang in center but as you flip it around to the back I mean look at it there is no hiding those arms at all and the head is quite literally dragging itself along the ground but surprisingly all six wheels are real they all roll none of them are fake so that's kind of awesome and I guess they're going to use this for an upcoming Optimus Prime because this is very similar in its design to the Smash Changers which also was a retool from Optimus Prime so I guess that's why the truck does look quite inaccurate to the movie but for a beast changer do you know what it gets the job done and it's not really intended for a collector I guess And here is Predacon Scorponok in his Scorpion mode because this is the only mode that this guy has. He doesn't transform into a robot, which is a shame, but is he going to transform in the movie? Honestly, I have no idea. But at least we have something to kind of compare this against because, as I said, we do see him in his Scorpion mode in the film. And it looks as if, though, he's going to be slightly more gunmetal in terms of color. But I will say the sculpt for this thing is on point, And that is the sole reason why I picked this set up because, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting a proper deluxe version, whether it be from the movie line or the studio series 
series anytime soon. So this will be a pretty solid placeholder. In terms of the detail, do you know what? I think the texture is pretty sick. You know, we get these massive pincers up front. We get these huge claws, which do rotate. So yeah, that's definitely kind of cool. Very reminiscent again to how he appeared in the Michael Bay movie, especially when you check out the detail we have for the spine, or I guess you could say the neck, because that is definitely that kind of spinning mechanism that the OG Scorponok had back in the 2007 film. And I do like the way the legs look, and then we get the massive sting here at the top. Now, in terms of the articulation, you know, to be fair, it's literally just some hinge joints here for, I guess, the elbows, a little rotation here at the claw, and the sting can move back and forth. That is it. You know, he's incredibly basic because he does become weaponized armor for Scourge. So what you're going to want to do is bring yourself in one Scourge, or to be fair, any of the other kind of Beast Combiner robots. We can then take the tail, and I guess in some ways we need Primal for this because you are just going to want to rip it clean off of himself, just like that. And we can set this here off to the side for now. And to be fair, I think out of all of the Beast Combiners that I've picked up, the way this works is definitely the coolest. So what you're going to want to do is smack those massive pegs into the ports that we have over Scourge's shoulders. So snap him in there. You then take the scorpion head itself bring this section down and it does click into place and look at that it kind of auto morphs so the legs do form shoulder armor the actual claws of the scorpion do become these additional kind of quad arms for scourge and not a bad look now in terms of the face design i think it's kind of a merge between scourge's face and then scorponok's face because you can kind of see the orange visor inspired by scourge but yeah that definitely does look like a pair of mandibles and you know what, it's not bad, gets the job done I guess, and you know, in terms of the sting, what you do is you just smack it into the arm, and I guess Scourge has got himself a nice old stinging weapon, which he can smack around, take down some water bots, whack out some Maximals with, but are we going to see this in the movie? Probably not, I can't imagine Scourge brutally ripping a Scorponok in half and then slapping it over the top of himself, but yeah, do you know what, it's not a bad gimmick. Now as we get stuck into a few comparisons, again, we're kicking things off with the big, the bad, the Scourge. So here we have him alongside the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Deluxe Bumblebee. But for a few other movie line comparisons, here we have the Weaponizer Optimus Prime, which is kind of a step up in terms of engineering. You know, he's a little more articulated than this Scourge. But in terms of scale, as you guys can see, they don't pair too badly alongside one another. Here he is next to the Beast Combiner's Optimus Primal, which is just atrocious. So at least this Scourge kind of has slightly better proportions portions than this guy because those arms just look ridiculous. And for a blast from the past, here we have the Rise of the Beast Scorponok alongside the original 2007 Deluxe. And I'm going to be real with you guys, if Hasbro decide to bring out a Deluxe version of this design, whether it be movie line, whether it be studio series, I'm going to go crazy for it because this is one of the best 07 figures. I mean, look at it. It's like 16 years old and it still holds up impeccably well. It's probably one of the most accurate Transformers figures that came out in 2007. But to kind of go back to my earlier point, there are definitely some massive similarities between the two designs, especially as you check out the back. I mean, look at it. They both have that kind of middle turbine as seen in 2007. So I am left wondering if towards the end of the Rise of the Beast movie, you know, once the Terracons have perhaps been defeated, are we going to see one of these bad boys eject out of the ground? And is that going to kind of be our end credit sequence? I guess only time will tell, but it would definitely be a pretty nice nod to that original Bay movie, in my opinion. Here he is alongside the Beast Combiner's Skull Cruncher. And whilst these figures overall are not the best, I will say they're Beast Companions, such as Scorponok, such as Skull Cruncher are pretty cool. You know, if you just want them displayed alongside some of your other movie line, Deluxe Voyagers or your Studio Series figures, I do think they're pretty decently sized and they also have an adequate amount of detail and paint. Here he is alongside the Scorponok, which came packaged with the Studio Series Blackout, just as I know there are some of you guys out there which aren't old enough to have picked up that original 2007 version, which makes me feel so incredibly old. And you guys knew I had to throw this comparison in there. Here we have Movie Line Voyager Primal alongside Scorponok. And as you saw from the trailer, Primal is slicing and dicing these guys up. He quite literally grabs one, rips its head off, and he has the spinal cord kind of dangling out of his mouth. So cannot wait to see how barbaric Primal is going to be in this upcoming film. And wrapping up on this review for the Rise of the Beasts, so Beast Combiner, Scourge, and Scorponok. Overall, you know, the Scourge figure is incredibly basic. Personally, I didn't pick this set up for Scourge, nor for the combining gimmick. I picked it up solely because at the moment, it's the only way to get a Rise of the Beast Scorponok. And with confirmation that they are definitely going to be appearing in the movie in masses, I had to get one into the collection. And for the time being, it's not a bad stand-in. You know, unfortunately, there are no rumors if we're going to be seeing a proper deluxe version. So I don't mind having 
this guy in the collection for now. Decent detail, decent sculpt work, all right paint work. You know what? I'm going to keep it. Scourge though, yeah, not great at all. Bad looking truck mode looks nothing like how it appeared in the movie. The robot mode is okay detail wise, but articulation is straight up trash. So in terms of a collector appeal, unless you want it for Scorponok, then there really isn't much here for you guys. But if you are a younger collector, I can see the whole kind of combining gimmick being fun to an extent. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this. If you are a collector, are you going to be going out hunting for this set solely for Scorponok? Let me know down below and until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.